Hey everyone, the market traded in a fairly narrow range this week, ending the week right between the 570 and 575 strikes. These are two of the largest positive gamma exposure strikes that we've been watching all week long. Uh, and we basically closed right in the middle of that zone. One of the key features of positive gamma exposure environments is this buy the dip, sell the rip kind of action. And you can see that very clearly here. Basically every time we saw even a small market dip, buyers stepped in. Uh, and this is, of course, the case with option dealers coming in and selling as price moves into these key gamma exposure levels and buying as price dips down to the bottom key gamma exposure levels. And that's basically what we saw happening all week long. We're still in, in a largely positive gamma exposure environment. We obviously have a lot of gamma rolling off today since it's a weekly expiration, uh, but a lot of key things to look for in the coming week. One of those factors is quarter end rebalancing. Sean, I know you've been watching that a lot as well as the VIX. Why don't you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, good points, Anthony. On the uh, quarter end, we uh, we still see that 5750 gamma cluster that's there uh, for Monday on the 30th. We've already crossed 5750 and come back underneath it. And uh, what I'm looking at here, a different perspective on basically the same chart you were showing. I'm starting to uh, pay attention to the fact that we are we're below the whole moving average. That's this kind of pink line here. And we've been below that now for three days. Now, even though the whole has been rising, so price has been able to still show kind of an upward trend from that. You can see their selling pressure as denoted by the fact that these candles are red. And, uh, you know, these with the SPX, this reflects the cash session. So basically, sellers are starting to step in and quarter end or whatever, you know, is causing this to be uh, held up until now. Um, as long as this is below the hole, you know, I think the risk is to the downside. And even reaching this middle channel at 56.14 would, would be bullish long term. But, man, that's 120 points, you know, 124 points. So, uh, you know, th these are... Uh, sizable moves that are probably just ahead. Yeah, great point, Sean, about the selling pressure on the last three candles. Another key factor I've been watching is the semiconductors, and I've been paying attention to the SMH, which is the Semiconductor ETF. We mentioned uh, in a few videos ago how SMH basically broke this down trend line uh, here a few weeks ago. And uh, we've kind of been, you know, seeing some follow through up into this 250 to 255 range. So semiconductors have really started making a little bit of a comeback. And uh, I think if this continues, if we can get semiconductor participation above this 250 to 255 range on SMH. From a technical and a gamma exposure perspective, this could be uh, some room to run here in, a, in an explosive manner. We've also got this uh, gap here left over from back in July. That would also be sort of a magnet to fill as well for price action. So a couple of things to remember here. You know, if this fails, like Sean was talking about with some of the selling pressure in the broader market overall, semiconductors could lead to the downside. But if we do see a breakout here, um, I think that the semiconductors could be leaders to the upside in sort of a capitulatory move for the market. So, you know, we're kind of at a crucial inflection point for semiconductors specifically. Obviously, markets are still near all-time highs, so a lot to pay attention to next week. Yeah, you're right about the SMH looking bullish, Anthony. That's Those are great points. And uh, kind of like we were just talking about, it's all a matter of time frame. So one thing I noticed looking at the VIX, after we had this, this huge spike back in September, and look at the candle today. Uh, basically, the VIX is up 10%. And it fits, people laugh when we talk about charting the VIX, but look at how perfectly it fit within these two hour Keltner channels. It tested below the middle Keltner and then today closed right at the top Keltner right here. And so I could easily see this being a short term resistance point, uh, especially with the last day of the month. I'm sure we'll see all kinds of games on Monday, maybe some surprises both up and down uh, because there's so many other factors playing into it. It wouldn't surprise me at all to see the VIX uh, bounce back down from that two hour 
resistance, even if we see more downside into October, that might fit in with setting a base for a bigger rally in SMH and some of these other potentially bullish things that we see in a year end. Now, I just want to take a, a big picture look at the market action overall today. You can see quite a bit of negativity across the various sectors. The one sector that did stand out was energy and consumer durables, mostly led by Tesla. Uh, the rest of the market really struggled, mostly flat to, to the downside, financials, tech, healthcare, retail. Uh, if we go out to the weekly time frame for, for last week, you see the biggest leaders was really uh, tech and a lot of the consumer names, Walmart, Home Depot, McDonald's, uh, again, Tesla. So a few sectors just to look out for in the coming week to see if these continue leading. And I mentioned Tesla. Tesla is actually uh, coming into a very interesting level here. We had a uh, intermediate peak between the 260 and the 270 level, and we're coming right back into that zone here. Looking at the gamma exposure levels, uh, we see the 250 to 260 level was a very important level this week. I'm going to talk about a trade we did here, taking advantage of those levels here in a second. The 300 strike, though, also has some pretty sizable gamma exposure at that strike. And so I think, you know, the possibility going into October or November, if the market does see an upturn, you know, Tesla has really been a laggard uh, over the last year or two. And I think coming up against this major level here, if we see a breakout, 300 is a possible target. That's just something we're going to be watching here in the coming week or two. And I mentioned we took a trade in Tesla this week. We were actually targeting that 250 to 260 gamma exposure level. We closed that out today for a $900 gain. This is on a $10,000 portfolio. We manage an a educational portfolio. Um, and so this was about a 9% gain just in a few days. And so just coming over here to the trade itself, this was actually an iron fly as we highlighted here in our community discord, an iron fly targeting the midpoint of this 250 to 260 spread based on our gamma exposure data. And so even though it was kind of a narrow range, for Tesla, the gamma exposure was pointing to that. You could see the iron fly was 10 wide, meaning we were buying the 245 puts, buying the 265 calls, and selling the 255 calls and puts. This actually gave us a really nice risk reward ratio. We had a, approximately a $7 uh, potential profit and a $3. Uh, potential loss. And so, you know, we like these asymmetric risk reward setups, and this one really played out well for us this week. By the way, if you guys are interested in accessing our gamma exposure tools or our option flow dashboard, head on over to geeksoffinance.com. You can also get access to our community discord. Uh, I'll put a link in the description below. Thanks so much, everybody, for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next video.